Enjoy the journey. Subscribe to our videos and give us a huge thumbs up. This is called the lamp. I'm sure some of you know. In 2004, there was a college student named Mitch who was going to a school at a university in Louisiana, and he met another senior at the University of Louisiana, or I'm sorry, it was a university in Louisiana. Her name was Kayla. And Mitch was immediately smitten by Kayla. He loved Kayla. She, she is the love of his life. And I mean you, Amanda. I saw you. <laughs> it took Kayla quite really hard to get it first. But they eventually became a, a couple. And, you know, they, they hit it off right away. Great couple. They graduate and they move in together in an apartment in Louisiana. And Life is great. You know, the, the first couple of years that they were post-grad, they, they really focused on their careers, but they always found time for each other, going on you know, walks and bike rides and playing games together. I mean, they're really living like the, their best life. <laughs> Two years after graduating, so this is 2006, they buy their dream home. It's this cute little house with a white picket fence up front, a little yard in a nice, safe neighborhood. And a year after moving into this dream home, so that's 06, 07, they have their first child, a uh, little girl. Uh, and then two years after that, they have their son, and their family's complete. So it's 2009, they have, they're married, they have their two kids. And Mitch loved his life. He loved his job, he loved his wife, he loved his kids. And every morning before he would go off to work, he would make a point of going in his kids' bedrooms and just looking at his kids, you know, these beautiful little kids. And then at night, you know, they play games together as a family, and they always went on field trips on the weekend, and life was really, really good. But in 2009, so this is, uh, yeah, 2009, so shortly after their son was born, their second child, Mitch was at home, in his dream home, cute little home, and he was watching TV, he was watching a football game, and uh, as he was sitting there, watching the game, he suddenly became distracted by a lamp. A lamp in the corner of his room. Uh, like this lamp. <laughs> it was a red lamp, and there was nothing about this lamp that was in any way unique. It was just a lamp that you would get at like Target or something. But Mitch, he said, watching TV, he keeps looking over at this lamp, and it it looked blurry to him. Nothing else in the room is blurry. It's just the lamp. And it's not like the light bulb, you know, at night when, when your vision's not as good and you're looking at the light and it's a little bit blurry. It wasn't like that. Like, the lamp itself, independent of the rest of the room, was blurry and it made no sense. And so Mitch is like staring at this lamp, trying to like rub his eyes to, you know, maybe, maybe it's me, but he just can't. The lamp is still blurry. And so eventually, Mitch, you know, he forgets the, the game he's watching, and he just gets up and he walks over to the lamp to see what's going on with this lamp. And he's right on top of the lamp, and it's still blurry. You know, he's, he's moving it around. It's, it didn't make any sense to him. But eventually, kind of going back to the first story where he'll do all these things to make it feel okay, he's like, this is okay. <laughs> and he sat back down and continued watching this game. But at some point, as he's gone back to the game, doing his best to avoid the lamp, he looks over again, and he sees the lamp has changed. Not only is it blurry, but it's now upside down. Like it's literally, it's, it's inverted itself. Boom. <laughs> and now Mitch is like, am I having a stroke? Am I having a heart attack? Is there something wrong with me? And so he gets up, he walks over to the lamp again. You know, he, he can't make sense, he doesn't touch it, he's just looking at the lamp, it doesn't make any sense. But Mitch, being the, you know, ever-optimist, just decides, okay, that's fine. She was back to the couch. But now he can't focus on the game, he can only look at the lamp. And it's not even because it looked blurry or because it was upside down, it's now become something else. Now, for some reason he can't even articulate, he's just drawn to this lamp. He can't look at anything else, he can't think about anything else, it's just the lamp. And at this time, his wife and his kids come home. So he's, he's very fixated on the lamp, wife and kids come in, and it, Mitch thought about telling his wife that something weird's happening here, but he didn't. And he ended up kind of breaking his, 
his gaze to the lamp, and he went and saw his wife, and his kids didn't bring up the lamp at all. And they went about their night that night, all, all normal, nighttime routine, putting the kids to bed, whatever. But then, after he went to bed that night, Mitch got up after everyone had fallen asleep, and just for reasons unknown, he snuck back downstairs and sat on the couch and stared at this lamp, which was still upside down and blurry. All night, Mitch stayed on the couch staring at this lamp. The next morning, Kayla, Mitch's wife, she wakes up and she notices Mitch is in a bed with her, and so she goes downstairs and she finds Mitch on the couch. He's not asleep. He's wide awake, staring at this lamp, and she's like looking at him, she's looking at what he's looking at. She doesn't understand what's happening. And for what it's worth, Mitch was a guy who was like clockwork. He had his routines, he went to work, he did this, he did that. He wasn't a guy who deviated. And so this whole thing seems weird, and she's like, Mitch, what's going on? What are you, what are you doing down there? And Mitch, again, he thought about, maybe I should tell her what's going on, but he didn't. And he said, oh, just feeling sick. I'm gonna have to stay home from work today. And Kayla, in her head, she's like, well, you never stay home from work, even when you're really sick. What's going on? And he was like, I'm just going to stay home today. She's like, okay. But she's very concerned about him at this point. Something's going on. But she lets it be. And so eventually, Kayla and the kids, they, they leave the house. And that leaves Mitch at home. When Kayla came back to the house that evening, Mitch was, as you might have guessed, still sitting on the couch, still staring at the lamp. But now the only light on in the house is the lamp. And so it's a very eerie thing. She's walked into her house, and her husband is still locked in on this weird lamp. And at this point, she walks over to it, and she's like, what's going on with this lamp? <laughs> Look normal to her. But Mitch didn't respond. At this point, Mitch became unable to speak. And so literally, Kayla is like, Mitch, what are you doing? What's going on? What's happening here? And Mitch is just, she's now putting it together. Like, maybe there's a serious thing happening with my husband. And so she, she sees it, and she says, okay, I'm calling the doctor. There's something wrong. Something's wrong here. Mitch not saying anything. As Kayla called the doctor, she's on the phone, kind of hysterical, you know, panicking about what's going on with her husband. She's realizing it's been like two days of this. Mitch is, you can't even hear her. He's just staring at the lamp. And the lamp, which is upside down and blurry, it begins to grow. It begins to grow so big so quickly that Mitch realizes that in any, any moment here, it's going to consume the whole room. Like, it's impossible what's happening to this lamp. And then right as this lamp has grown so big, it's literally about to take him over, everything goes black. Everything is black for Mitch. And he hears this, the sound of people screaming all around him. And he opens his eyes, and he's not in this house anymore. He, he's on what looks like a college campus, surrounded by this ring of very concerned people who are just looking, looking at him. He's, like, he's on the ground, he's on the cement. He's on the ground kind of putting together what's going on, and everybody's looking at him very concerned. And all Mitch is doing is scanning the crowd for his wife and kids. He can't see him. And then suddenly a police officer runs into the, into the crowd, lifts Mitch up, and runs with him over to his cruiser. Just takes him straight out, no explanation, just carries him. Mitch doesn't know what's happening. And all Mitch can think to do is say to the cop, where's my family? Where's my wife? Where are my kids? What's going on? And the cop just said, I don't know. I don't know. You've been hurt. I don't know where your family is. So he gets him in the car, and they begin driving to the hospital, because that's what he tells Mitch they're going. And Mitch is like, what happened? And he said, well, you got attacked by a football player at this university. I don't know why, but you got attacked, and you fell down and you hit your head. You were knocked unconscious. Mitch is like, I don't remember doing that. Mitch got brought to the hospital. And when he was at the hospital, he just kept asking the doctors over and over again, where's my wife and kids? And they would make the devastating discovery that Mitch never had a family. He never had a wife. He never had kids. He didn't go to the university in Louisiana. It was all something that happened in his head. It was this very rare case of being knocked unconscious, and in a few seconds of being unconscious, his brain constructed an entire life a 10-year history that never existed. But to Mitch, it existed absolutely. And so it completely ruined Mitch's, Mitch's life. He had to grieve the loss of his kids. He had to grieve the loss of his wife that never existed. 
and he would go on to talk about, he did make a physical recovery, but in his, he's posted several times online about this. He says that even now, periodically, he will have these dreams where he'll see his son, who's perpetually, you know, two years old, running around this house that he shared. But he can never quite see his son's face. And when his son speaks, he can't hear his voice. And if that's not the most depressing thing to think about, I don't know what it is. And so on that note, that is the end of the show. Thank you.